Go. All right, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Thank you so much for joining us on this second meeting in December. I know everybody has lots of plans and lots of stuff they're doing. So we just want to, I just want to say, I appreciate your time and willingness to join us this evening. That being said, Councilwoman Cuellar, if you would be so kind. Let us pray. Loving Father, we take time out this evening to give you thanks and praise for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon our city and that you bestow upon each and every one of us here tonight. We remember those who have lost loved ones. We ask that you be a source of strength and consolation for them who are grieving their loss. We remember those who have family members that are struggling with infirmities during this time. We also ask that you be with them. And the Lord, if it be your will that you Grant them speedy recoveries so that they can be with their family during this time. We also ask that you send forth and you lead and guide us by your Holy Spirit in decisions that we make tonight. Lord, we need your help. We rely on you to guide us. That everything that we do will always be in accord with your will and in the best interest of our city and our residents. These prayers we offer in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Meeting's called to order. Roll call. Councilman Linden. Present. Councilman Cuellar. Here. Councilman Box. Here. Councilman Sims. Here. And myself here. At this time, I would look for the approval of the minutes for the reg regular city council meeting on December 6th of 22. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the council meeting from December 6th, 2022. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I do abstain as I was not present. Um, at this time, I'll look for the payment of the current bills. Motion to pay the current bills in amount of $258,422.83. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. At this time, we would look for any professional or consultant reports to the council this evening. Any professionals or consultants? All right. Mayor, you have the floor, sir. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. I'm going to say it one more time since it uh, seemed like I heard it. I didn't hear anything really come back to me. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Good evening. good evening. We are so delighted to have you in the place to be able to, uh, to, be able to go with us through our last agenda for 2022. We've experienced a lot of success and prosperity here in the city during this year and i would like to wish everyone a merry christmas and a prosperous new year i have several proclamations to give out as well as some awards for individuals that participated in the christmas light event a lighting event so i'm going to do that first and then i have a few things that i want to cover before i give it back to the council president Senator Linda Coleman Madison was going to be here tonight. The city of Irondale has received a $5,000 grant from her. These funds will be used to replace the sign at the entrance of the city of Irondale. We will replace that sign that has been inoperable for probably 10 years. We currently have $25,000 that we've raised Commissioner Knight gave $20,000 towards the sign. Senator Coleman is given five. And the goal is to be able to raise $65,000 to be able to do the entire project. If you're sitting out there with some funds or discretionary money and you would like to be a part of that, we'll be more than happy to take that here at the city. 
Now I'm going to move into the proclamations. If uh, Ms. Weber would come to the front or anybody that's here for the proclamation that I'm going to present to uh, the Weber family. John, they didn't put this up for somebody our height. No, we're not. So, uh, so I just kind of work with it. But uh, the first time that I had an opportunity to really to meet Dr. Weber in person was when we were having issues with the Alabama spay and neuter clinic. And he was fighting the good fight against all of the other good veterinarians here in the state of Alabama. And I had a chance with Mayor Alexander at that time to be able to go in to visit him and to see how the city could provide support in his fight of what was going on down there in Montgomery. So we want to be able to thank him, uh, Ms. Weber, for being able to do that. And what I've heard about him in the city, I haven't heard anything but, but good things about Dr. Weber. Everybody loves him. And we just wanted to be able to give you this proclamation because of the contributions that he had made here to the city of Irondale. Also, I wanna say in April, our calendar hadn't came out yet for the year, but we are going to do an event for animals in oh. April of 2023. And we would love to attach Dr. Weber's name yeah. to that event, yeah. event to honor him okay. for everything that he's done here in the city. So Emma will be getting in contact with you That's and good. letting you know you how you can. Yeah, we definitely good. want you to be to be a part of Thank that event. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this proclamation, and it says, "Whereas veterinarian Dr. William Weber was a treasure to the Irondale community and to animal lovers across the state of Alabama." And whereas Dr. Weber passed away on October the 18th, 2022, just three days before his 85th birthday, having dedicated his life to caring for animals in need. And whereas Dr. Weber was one of the founders of the Alabama Animal Adoption Society and was also instrumental in the establishment of the Alabama Spay and Neuter Clinic. And whereas through his own veterinarian clinic, he compassionately treated innumerable pets that might never have received treatment otherwise. Whereas Dr. Weber worked with the Alabama Wildlife and Rehabilitation and fought vigorously for the care and treatment of animals unable to care for themselves. And whereas his tireless efforts truly made a difference in reducing pet overpopulation and suffering in our community and our state. Whereas Dr. Weber's legacy is cherished by so many of his patients and will forever live on through all of the animals whose lives he saved and the people that love them. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, James Douglas Stewart Jr., Mayor of the City of Irondale, issue this proclamation in remembrance of the life and legacy of Dr. William B. Weber. In witness thereof, I have signed and sealed on the 20th day of December, 2022. Is there anything you want to say? Yes, Linda. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Weber, Dr. Weber's wife. Uh, I, he and I have been married for 44 years. Um, I'd like to bring to attention the fact that I thank the mayor and the council for this presentation and for this in, in event. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, all of you and the other people who had come for all the cards that we got. Many, many, many get well cards in the hospital, at home, wherever. So. I want to thank everyone for that. In addition, I'd like to thank um, Annette and Celeste for helping me feed animals that I still have. And I'd like to thank our staff at the <coughs> Eastwood Animal Clinic for their tireless effort in finding new homes for all the animals that we have ended up with after all these years. Um, 
So I appreciate especially uh, Stacy Foss, uh, Cheryl Nepper, Tyler Newton, Terry Thomason, and Elizabeth West. I would like particularly to thank John Baldridge, who tirelessly drove me back and forth to hospitals and picked me up and came over to the house to help. Uh, our house has 14 steps, so every time Dr. Weber was not able to go up and down the stairs, we had a whole group of people that would come over to help us deal with that. Um, and I'd also like to uh, definitely thank the Irondale Fire Department, who came over, I don't even know how many times, to get Dr. Weber down those 14 steps and they would carry him. They would, you know, bring their ambulances. And it was uh, a work in progress because our house is like a jungle, sort of. So it was not uh, very conducive to large vehicles. So those are the people I'd like to thank. And especially, I'd like to thank Stacy Folks, who tirelessly stood by his side in his last days, as did several other people. And I could never have faced that by myself. I thank all of you for being here. And if any of you would like a, one of these, it's a picture of Dr. Weber. It says what his accomplishments are. And on the back is my favorite quotation in the whole world about animals. So anyone who would like one of these, I'll, I'll leave them up there at the front and you can just help yourself. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The second proclamation goes to someone that I met on the track at Beacon Park. To be honest with you all, I was envious and jealous of him at the same time. I would go up there to run one lap. He would lap me and run several other laps and seemed like he hadn't even broken a sweat in the process. And then when I found out how old he was at the same time, it really made me feel bad. <clears throat> but I'm going to ask Mr. D. Reverend Pastor D.L. R.L. McAdory to come to the front. And I have a proclamation for you. And Ms. McAdory, First Lady, you can come as well. Don't they look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> look like they brought Christmas in the building. And of course, you know how wives always want to give us instructions. Always want to tell us what to do. Is everything okay, Ms. McAdoo? We lined up right? <laughs> Okay, but we won't do right, don't we, Pastor? Okay, all right. 54 years. Whereas Pastor R.L. McAdory has served as a pastor of Faith Missionary Baptist Church in Bessemer, Alabama for 28 years. Whereas Pastor R.L. and First Lady Dorothy McAdory are esteemed citizens of the city of Irondale, having dedicated time to the community, volunteerism, coaching youth sports, and covering our city in prayer. And whereas Pastor McAdory, was licensed to the gospel ministry by Reverend J.P. Parnell of Mount Hebron Baptist Church, Irondale, Alabama, on May 24, 1981. Whereas Pastor McAdory attended Howard College Divinity School, earned a certificate 
in Christian training from Sanford University and was awarded a bachelor's degree from the Birmingham Baptist Bible College. And whereas Pastor and First Lady McAdory have devoted their lives to passionately serving God and ministering through both the word and deed, and whereas Pastor Ariel McAdory will officially retire on December the 31st, 2022, at a momentous gala surrounded by his family, friends, and those who have been touched by his more than 40 years of ministry. Now, therefore, he be here resolved that I, James Douglas Stewart Jr., mayor of the city of Irondale, issue this proclamation in celebration of Pastor R.L. and First Lady Dorothy McAdory, in witness whereof I have signed the seal on the 20th day of December 2022. Miss McAdory, is it okay with Miss McAdory? <laughs> he says. <laughs> Let me first of all say thank God for tonight and let me say I'm glad that this proclamation I'm able to hear it. Most times when proclamations are read, uh, we are stretched out across the altar. But I want to thank you for uh, this proclamation to this great mayor um, of this great city, my friend, my brother, city council. And to my family, my son is here, Reverend Hicks is here, and others who are here. My moderator is here, and to all of God's children. Let me just say, I love uh, Irondale, and um, I love this mayor. Um, he, uh, he is doing some great work. Him and his council. He, I heard him say one time, he, he's a male that happens to be black. Mm -hmm. And, but that doesn't matter about him being black. He's a male of all of the citizens. He alerts us and lets us know what's going on in the city. Never have this city did that before. And I want to thank him for his kindness and his ministry that he's running in this great city. I love Irondale. Uh, Irondale. Uh, I, I lived before I moved to Irondale. I, I, you know, they said you don't have to put a microphone in front of a preacher. Yeah, yeah I'm getting ready to <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I, I, I promise you, I, I, I promise you, I promise you. But I lived in what they call, they used to call it East Irondale. And we were not considered Irondale citizens because we lived in East Irondale. But as the Lord would have it, in 1957, we moved to Irondale. I love Irondale because if I had never moved to Irondale, I never would have met Miss Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and my three boys would not be here. We would not be standing here. But because I moved to Irondale and met Dorothy Scrooge. And later I married her and when we, when we got married, uh, 1969. <laughs> 1969. And she's given us the three great children. And so Irondale, I love Irondale. Irondale is small, but can I say in my conclusion that just because you're small doesn't mean you're insignificant. You can be small, but if you be a great servant, you can be great. This is a great city. The most, uh, the, 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 the unknown city. People say Birmingham is an unknown city. It's, you don't understand. But Iron there is a jewel. And Mayor, I want to thank you and all of you 
for giving me this compliment. Congratulations. My wife is 54 years. I don't know if she wants to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out here. All right. <laughs> All right, now what I'm getting ready to do is we had a contest and we identified winners from each district. And it was based on your Christmas decorations. So we have a winner from district one, two, three, and four. We did not have anyone to submit anything for district five. However, we are looking forward to next year having more contestants and it was really um hopefully you all will get an opportunity to be able to ride through and to see the following houses as well so the winner from district one is miss kim mcdonnell no i want you to stand in the back <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, I always have to mess with Kim, uh, but uh, Kim is the winner from District 1. Is there anything you want to say, Kim? Okay. A winner from District Two is Rattus Johnson, Sixteenth Street South. Mr. Johnson is right down the street from the community school, uh, right before you get ready to go under the bypass. Uh, it's lit up like uh, Christmas oh, yeah. winter wonderland. Yeah, uh, so we want to thank you uh, for, I, I've seen it even before we had the contest and have always admired it and wanted to stop by and say something to you. But now that you're here, I don't have to do that. So I appreciate it. Oh, okay. Is there anything you want to say? Well, I just, like she said, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy people coming by and looking at it. And that's why I do it. So even if it's not my job, I still enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how many more years I'll be able to climb the ladder to get up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. You do a great job. As far as um, my girls, whenever we're coming home or anything like that, we always make a point to drive by your house. Even if, we, if it <laughs> takes us two or three minutes out of the way, we, we've got to go by your house. So it's a, it's a, it's it's fantastic. You've been doing it ever since we've been in Irondale at yeah. least. I've been doing it a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. Long time. yeah. So. I'm already looking for new life for next year. <laughs> 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 Our winner for District 3 is Joshua Brazil. Yeah, Josh. Joshua's house is on Iberwood Road. Uh, so if you are taking the detour, 
that we now have in place. And you want to do a, I think you can do a shortcut through that to, to get over I to don't encourage. Okay, well, he doesn't, en <laughs> he doesn't encourage that. But um, I would has a very steep incline. And his house is over to the right hand side. He did a fantastic job with the Christmas decoration. So Joshua, is there anything you want to say? Uh, I'm speechless. <laughs> but like everyone else, I'm also uh, planning for uh, next year. <laughs> planning stages are in progress. Okay, Cindy, anything you I just want to say to Josh, you're just a wonderful member of our community and always doing something beautiful in his house. And, you know, when he emailed me to let me know I'm going to be entering and I want to make sure I'm home when the judges get by. I said, call Steve Hawley. We'll let you know we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Josh. Thank you. Appreciate it. Winner for District 4 is Ms. Cora Holtbrooks. I don't think Ms. Cora is here. She's actually 84 years old. Uh, so she's not here tonight. But if you go off Derby, get on Amber's Hill and make a right, go down maybe half a mile, and her house is over to the left hand side. It's decorated very nicely, an activity scene, bunch of lights that are on the house. I think it may have had toy soldiers and whatever. So it's a it's a beautiful house as well. So if you want to go in the city of Irondale and to be able to see some great decorations, I would say that if you go to each one of the districts that we have here, you will definitely, definitely be a treat. We're looking for more people to be able to participate next year. And I'm even going to do a better job of doing that myself. So, uh, <laughs> so Kim, as we've already thought about what we can put up and, and get into the contest on next year as well. That concludes my report here down on the floor. Got several things that I want to say quickly so that we can progress with our meeting. Uh, the first thing, the first thing that I wanted to do is to give everyone an update on the road closing, uh, Grants Mill Road. Uh, the road will be opening 15 days from the next 15 days from the next 15 days. I haven't had an opportunity to say that in so long that when Frank and I went on the tour yesterday uh, with the Jefferson County Engineering Department, they took us up there to allow us to be able to walk the road, see what was going on so that we can communicate to the citizens about how long it's going to be before the road is open. And to be honest with you, they really don't know. There is some... Um, soft soil that they thought that was going to be solid rock and they're having to compact that to be able to continue to build the wall all the way down to Mercedes Drive. Therefore, we're going to be meeting every two weeks and I will have an update for you every two weeks to let you know what's going on, uh, how long it's gonna be before the road is open but they've completed half of the roundabout. So I know that you all are very excited about uh, the roundabout and having a chance to be able to drive in there. But right now, I'm not gonna give you a date or time because honestly, they don't know how long it's going to take, but they still feel that the road will completely open in August of 23. Uh, the city of Irondale closed on two land deals on Friday. The first one is 143 acres. The price was $300,000. And the proposed use of this land is to build a brand new fire station in District 3. The second piece of land was off of Grants Mill Road for $900,000. And this has been proposed to build a brand new library 
for the city of Irondale. If you're all familiar with, we call the Tipido property where you would see them out there cutting grass, throwing rocks in a hole and all of that stuff. That's the piece of property that I'm talking about that is right next to the new dentist's office. So we're looking and moving forward and building a new library in that area there. We had a ham giveaway on Saturday, December the 17th. I came through here about 8.30 and it was all, no, I came through about 6.30 and it was already 40 cars that was lined up. But by the time I came back at nine o'clock, cars were all the way down to 84 lumber. Uh, we were able to give out over 200 hams. I want to thank the Irondale Community Foundation because they were the ones who purchased the hams. The city gave the hams away. And also there were 20 lucky people that received in an envelope, $25 gift certificate to go to Winn-Dixie as well. So not only were some people blessed to receive the ham, but when they open up that card, and I hope they open up that card, I told them to open up the card <laughs> because so often when you get a card, the first thing you do, you throw it on the seat and you keep on going, but it was a $25 gift card that was in there for that. Also on December the 13th, we had a blood drive that was very successful here at the city. Over 60 people registered or came down to give blood. Out of that 60 plus, 56 was able to be able to give blood. Uh, according to Life South, we had one of the most successful blood drives that they had done for a municipality. And because of the success, they have asked, can they come back in April of 23 to be able to do the same thing? Also, on December the 6th, I had a chance to give the welcome at Kirkwood by the river. They had a ribbon cutting there. They have a new uh, 66 bedroom facility for memory care patients as well as assisted living. I want to thank Chad Carter for inviting me to come and to participate in the ribbon cutting at Kirkwood by the river. I think it's almost a 14 or $15 million investment that they have made into their facility. And it is a great place to age if you have to go to one of those facilities. I want to say also be on guard for the fire department coming through your neighborhood uh, with the fire trucks. Um, They've already gone through District 3 tonight, but on December the 21st, they're going through Grants Mill, Stone Ridge, and Holiday Gardens. And on December the 22nd, they're going through the Irondale Mobile Home Park, Eastwood Mobile Home Park, Amber Hills, and Rock Ridge. And finally, I just want to read you something that I received from a citizen today that was talking about one of our employees. And it says, earlier this week, my wife fell while shopping at the Dollar General on Crestwood Boulevard. I was in my dentist chair on Grant's Mill. I got a call while the dentist was working on my teeth. Answered it and was from the Irondale Police Chief, Jason Wiggins, who was in the store when my wife fell. I immediately left the dentist and went to the store. Chief Wiggins stayed with my wife, made sure she was comfortable as possible. Wiggins is the definition of a good and caring man. Irondale is fortunate to have him. Jason is not here tonight, but hopefully he's listening. Um, they don't receive compliments too often from the, for the police department. And I just wanted to read to let you all know the type of people that we have that is serving you here in the city of Irondale. Thank you, council president and the council for enduring me tonight. Uh, I now turn it back over to you. Thank you for your report, sir. We appreciate it. Um, any department heads that would like to give us a report this evening? Any department heads that would like to give us a report? Okay. That being said, we'll get into the council member reports. I'll go ahead and get started um, with just a statistic real quick. Um, our public works director, Frank Pennington, is always great about sending this information out. Uh, I will find it very interesting to see what the information looks like next month regarding this, um, especially because if you've enrolled in recycling, you should have your containers. Uh, I know a big part of the recycling and the contamination rate uh, has been things being wet due to precipitation. Um, these new uh, canisters should mitigate that. 
Um, so um, as far as this past month was concerned, it was a 35% contamination rate. About 20 tons worth of material was recycled. About 35% of that was considered contaminated. Uh, but once again, we have those new bins now that are closed. It should protect the material from uh, the elements. Uh, so as long as we do our job with making sure what goes into those bins is acceptable, we should see these percentage rates um, go down a little bit, which would be a which would be a great thing. The whole goal is, if we're recycling, is to actually recycle stuff, not to see stuff wound up in the dump after all. Uh, so, looking forward to seeing if that metric moves a little bit. Um, I want to thank the Arundel Fire Department. Um, seeing Santa Claus come by on the fire truck is always a huge thing. I know sometimes I even get in my truck with my girls, depending on when they come by, and we'll we'll stalk them through the community and see if we can catch them like two or three times. Um, last night, everybody was all in their robes and everything like that. We were having a sleepover with my, with my little girl's friends and stuff. So we heard the sirens and everything and ran out just in time to catch them. So we always enjoy that so much. So thanks to the fire department for, for leading that charge so consistently every year. Um, Councilman Sims. Um, we had the, um, well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, we had a neighborhood association, um, I guess dinner last Tuesday for a holiday garden. So anyone that came to that, thank you. And if you missed it, you can come next year. Um, hope everyone has a great holidays. Um, I know everyone is going to be probably in a thousand places in the next two weeks. If you're like me, you probably still have some Christmas shopping. So good luck. Be safe. <laughs> and um, we'll see you in January. Councilman Box. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Um, like to say that toy production is moving along nicely. We're about 30% ahead of next year. <laughs> Naughty and Niceless is actually, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry, Council President. Give me the wrong word. <laughs> wrong job. Wrong meeting. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. Uh, Mayor, thank you for announcing the fire station there for District 4 that we're coming up. That's going to be an amazing thing out there for our area. Uh, Frank with Public Works has now got everyone's uh, recycling and trash fully restored there at Mountain Lake. So uh, we're all enjoying that. Uh, congratulations to our winner in District 4 on the Christmas Light uh, Award. And that's amazing. So with that said, Merry Christmas to all and to all. Hopefully a good night. Uh, Councilwoman McQuayor. Yes, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, I want to give out give a shout out to uh, a couple of members of our District 3 community, uh, Judy Wilson and Marcella Hollier for their selfless efforts in making the entrance sign at Forest Leaf, Old Forest, Old Leaf Forest. If you haven't seen it, go by there. It's beautiful and very welcoming. And one thing I do want to mention is that many may not be aware that Judy Wilson has been doing planting beautiful plants there at that sign for many, many years now. And uh, she probably doesn't like me talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it because that takes a lot. She's very faithful about doing that. And so if any one of you know Judy Wilson, please give her a pat on the back. She's done a wonderful job, as well as Marcella Hollier. And also echoing uh, Council President Spivey's remarks in regard to our Irondale Fire Department. Thank them for taking Santa Claus throughout our Irondale community for all our children, both young and old. Uh, to go out and see him and follow him all over Irondale. Uh, I also want to thank our employees here who've given a lot throughout the year. Uh, they, they have come through ice cold, uh, rain, storms. Thank you for the wonderful job that you do in serving our residents here in Irondale. We're very blessed to have you, and I really hope and pray that uh, you all have a wonderful Christmas. And to everyone else, I wish you a very blessed Christmas and New Year. And that's all I have to report tonight. Councilman London. Thank you, Council President. Uh, first of all, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, second of all, uh, congratulations uh, to uh, the family of Dr. Weber and uh, Reverend McAdoo. Uh, congratulations, well, well-deserved, well-deserved proclamation. And thank you for being in District 1. Uh, all the support that you've given me over the years, I really appreciate that, even before Council. We've known each other even before council, so I just want to say thank you and well deserved, and thank you, uh, Mayor, for for that. Uh, also, uh, on uh, Sunday, Heidi Kiss gave out uh, a lot, a lot of toys. And I want to thank uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Quaylor for being out, uh, helping moving some boxes uh, to the kids. A lot of kids got served on Sunday, and uh, we really want to thank her uh, for what she's done and what her group, the organization, does for for the kids of Irondale. Uh, also, uh, Change Club uh, having their toy giveaway starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. 
We'll be at uh, uh, next to Dollar General, uh, 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. And we'll be there from Wednesday and Thursday uh, for this week and having their toy giveaway. And she wanted to just shoot a shout out to them and thank them. And uh, we still have some families. Uh, if you, any, anybody you know needs some toys, just have them show up and come by. Uh, we really, really uh, want to give all the toys and things and food. We're also giving out food also tomorrow and, and Thursday at 10 a.m. next to the, the um, uh, Dollar General. And also, I want to also thank uh, the mayor for those blue containers. Man, oh, my God, you just made my life easy, uh, those blue garbage cans. So I just want to say thank you to Frank and all of your, your staff uh, for those uh, bins. I mean, I'm telling you, I just turn my box, throw them in there. I keep mine in my garage. So I don't want any moisture uh, on the outside. I don't want anybody to turn them over. So I keep it in the garage, and I fill it up, and I roll it out on, on Monday morning. So thank you for those containers. Again, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And you're going to miss him up there watching tomorrow, right? Uh, Jen tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey. Also, we are having a luncheon for the uh, employees tomorrow at 1130 at the Irondale Civic Center. And I wanted to invite all of the counselors to come to that event. But it's at the Irondale Civic Center. We'll be there at 1130 uh, tomorrow. And also, Council President, if you don't mind, I wanted to say something based on what you and John said about the blue containers. Beginning January the 16th, if you do not have a blue container, we are not going to pick up your recycling. I'll say that one more time. Starting January the 16th, if you don't have one of the new blue recycling containers, we will not pick up your recycling. Secondly, if you do not tear up your cardboard boxes and put them in the container, we will not pick up the cardboard. You can no longer flatten the cardboard and put it up under the container to be picked up because when you put it out on Sunday night, moisture is in the air and contaminates the box on Monday morning. So if you do not rip up the boxes and put them inside of the bin, it will still be there on the side of the road. And if you do not sign up for the new container and have it effectively the use the date January the 16th, we will not pick up your recycling and Frank is looking forward to getting all of these phone calls 205-951-1420 again 205-951-1420 don't call the mayor's office call public works because they're the one who's responsible for picking it up but beginning January the 16th we will no longer pick it up if you don't lose the uh, blue container um I'm going to just circle back real quick mayor uh can you discuss city service can you dis uh, discuss any city service interruptions that might be occurring over the holidays? I know a lot of times those typically manifest on Monday. Well, that's why we won't pick up recycling for the next two weeks. I figured. We're asking you to use the large container. If you have too many boxes that are large, we actually just go ahead and put those uh, in the garbage instead of trying to recycle them if you don't want to tear them up or if you don't want them to be around the house until we pick up on January the 9th. Perfect. Thank you. And and just kind of dwelling back on recycling for just a moment, you can, if you're not enrolled in it, you can go to the city's website and enroll in it. Um, and then obviously with Christmas comes a lot of packaging and things of that nature. Uh, if you, if you get a box and it contains, you know, cardboard and you're, and you're wanting to recycle that, just remember if it has any of those plastic panes on there, like you get a box, it's got a toy, it's three quarters cardboard, but there's a big plastic sheet in there. Those things and excess tape need to really be removed from that cardboard before it goes into the recycling. Otherwise, it will be considered contaminated. Um, so if you're going to put the work in, just go ahead and rip those plastic pieces off of that cardboard. Remove any zip ties, any of that fun stuff. Um, I know we have an excess and abundance of, of stuff this time of year, but just please keep that in mind. Okay. And I know it's, it's a hassle to tear up the cardboard. I was in the basement yesterday for like 30 minutes and Kim was trying to figure out what was going down and going on in the basement. And I'm down there tearing up Amazon boxes uh, so that they would fit in the trash can. And trust me, they will fit. You just have to 
take the box of loose, flatten it, and put it in the container. I promise you all it will work. But Council President, Senator Coleman is here. So if you don't mind, please, I would like for her to come down and um, thank her for what she's doing for the city of Irondale. Absolutely. Please, you have Irondale. the floor by all means. Well, first of all, I want to thank Senator Coleman uh, for Madison Coleman for coming uh, today. She's been very philanthropic to the city of Irondale. Uh, this is not the first donation that she's given to us since I've been mayor. I want to say the first donation she gave was $20,000, and that $20,000 was used for the Explorer program that you we currently have in the fire department and also to be able to talk about neighborhood revitalization. And out of that was birthed the Citizen Engagement Academy. So Senator, I just wanted to let you know that the money that you've been giving to the city of Irondale is being put to good use and it is multiplying itself once it gets here. And she has for us today another donation for $5,000 so that, that will go towards replacing that digital sign that has not worked for at least 10 years down at the entrance of the city of Irondale. So I just want to thank uh, Senator Coleman for being such a blessing to the city of Irondale. Good evening, everyone. Happy holidays. Good evening. I don't know if y'all know the difference. It's always a beautiful, but it is really pretty out there. I mean, you can see it from the other state, but it's beautiful. Let me give you this. Okay, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is neat, so <laughs> But don't want to walk away with that one. Uh, this is the, this is the mock pick that I always recycle. But it's always a pleasure. Let me explain these monies. Um, all the legislators, when we repurposed the money for that one cent sales tax that the county was continuing to collect to pay off the school debt, after the money was paid off, the county continued to collect that money. And so, as you know, they got into a bind and they wanted us to come back and help build them out, which we did. But we said, we're not going to give all of this money to the county. We want to carve out a community grants fund because before then, we were not really able to address out of state monies, and we're still not really, unless it's a project that we always have to fight for. But this one is for the Jefferson County delegation that allows us to do some things in our district for our constituents and for member cities and the county. So money has gone to the sheriff's department for various things, it's gone to schools, because we always give money to schools. But it's just a really a fun thing and a pleasure when we can do things for the community, for municipal governments, for things that they needed. We did fire departments, police, I mean, and, and I have several municipalities. So it's always a pleasure. And the good thing is the mayor says it always goes to good use and you the citizens help make that decision of where you want the money to come. So it's nice, we don't fund everything. I'm sure this doesn't fund the whole project, sure but it's nice to, to, to pro provide that gap finance. So mayor, on behalf of Senate District 20, I want to present to you this check in the community for the $5,000 to help with this particular project. Senator, if you don't mind, can we get a picture? Yes. Okay. While, while everybody was coming, I just want to let you know that I had requested this from the senator in 22. And when I asked for it in 22, she told me that she had given out all of her allocations for the upcoming tourism, for, right, for the fiscal year. But I didn't reach out to her in 23. She reached out to me to let me know to go ahead and apply for it. So I wanna thank her for that because she reached out to me to be able to provide support to the city of Irondale. So I just want to thank you for that as well. We don't believe in getting money on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and we got too many needs in our district, so it's always good. That's what that's what just like folks just need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This my health report is. I was getting it wrong before.
All right, we'll go ahead and resume our agenda. A lot of good stuff tonight. A lot of good trouble, right, Mayor? Good yeah, trouble? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, at this time, we would take any reports of boards or non-council committees. Any reports of boards or non-council committees? Fair enough. We. Yes. If you want to go ahead and speak okay. on, on that liaison. Um, I'm a liaison to the CDA board. And there are a couple of things that uh, came out of the meeting tonight. Uh, the first thing is for all of our, well, actually both are for all our council members. Mark your calendars, please, for January the 17th at 1130 at the Irondale Civic Center. Uh, Chairman David Pugh is finalizing plans for the meeting that uh, we are to be having with developers uh, in regard to our economic development strategic planning where they can give us input on ways in which we can be much more effective in uh, recruiting additional uh, commercial business and retailers and in industry industrial development as well um, so that's 1130 irondale civic center uh, the uh, the other topic that was discussed is one of the items that we have uh, scheduled for um, uh, consideration and that is the uh, marijuana I'm trying to make sure I have the exact language um, for medical cannabis dispensing sites one of the things that the CDA discussed was to the City Council they wanted us to know that um, they are working very hard to uh, try to recruit business into Irondale and uh, we have the mayor has mentioned some possible things for them to do and so anything that we do that decisions that we make as a body please take that into account um, because they want to bring as much business uh, into Irondale and and they don't want anything that may be a setback or may be a, a, a negative mark on the city of Irondale uh, that's the only comments that they had to make for our council fair enough thank you you're welcome any other reports of boards or non-council committees fair enough we do not have any public hearings this evening so we'll go ahead and move into the council deliberation on agenda items item number one that is up would be resolution 2022 r231 authorizes mayor james d stewart jr to enter into an agreement with alabama power company for surveillance camera installation at the city of irondale water shop in an amount not to exceed four hundred and two dollars and forty five cents per month plus energy usage i know we've had a few of these cameras installed already councilman london any comments no comments uh, Councilman Cuellar? No comments. Councilman Box? No comments. Councilman Sims? None. And myself, none. Do we agree to keep this on consent? Yes. yes. Okay. Item number two, resolution 2022-R232 authorizes the execution of a service agreement with I Am Love Ministries in the amount of $500 from the 2022-23 fiscal year discretionary fund of Councilor John London to be used exclusively for the promotion of youth athletics in the city of Irondale for a youth athletics banquet. Councilman London, anything to say there? Uh, no, just one, one comment. The banquet's over. I got a little late, but I just wanted to have some information. Copy. Uh, Councilman Cuellar, any comments? Uh, no questions or comments. Councilman Box? No comments. Councilman Sims? No questions. And myself, none. We agree to keep this on consent? Yes. yes. All right. Item number three, resolve that resolution 2022-R233 authorizes the extension of the moratorium on short-term rentals within the city of Irondale, Alabama, enacted in resolution 2022-R164. And it's going to be, um, the resolution would bump it out until April 1st of 2023. Um, just from a housekeeping standpoint, this moratorium is currently in place. We're working on uh, we're working on uh, amending that or or coming to an agreement on what that's going to look like going forward. We just need a little bit more time. Councilman London, any comments on that? No questions. Councilman McQuarrie. No questions. Councilman Vox. I'm good. Councilman Sims. No questions. All right. Would we agree to keep this on consent? Yes. All right. 
Item number four, resolve that resolution 2022-R234 authorizes the execution of a service agreement with Studio by the Tracks in the amount of $1,500 to provide services to the City of Irondale to, prov um, to provide for those in the community with special needs and to create a community and career path for those individuals. Councilman London, any comments? No comment. Councilman McQuarrie? No comments. Councilman Box? No question. Uh, Councilman Sims? None. And myself, none. We agree to keep this on consent? Yes. yes. Okay. Item number five, um, resolve that resolution 2022-R235 authorizes the purchase of real estate at 4233 Hood Drive and 4239 Hood Drive and 2178 Ruffner Road for the purchase price of $425,000 plus closing costs and Mayor James D. Stewart Jr.'s execution of any documentation necessary to uh, effectuate such purchase transaction. Uh, Councilman London, any comments? No comments. Councilman McQuarrie? Um, I just have comments because I did receive calls and emails about what this is all about. This is for our water department. Our The current shop that they are in is well over 40 years old. It's very dilapidated. We've been having discussions about uh, replacing the building. They have equipment. They have a lot. And they looked at, also spoke with, uh, an, an owner of property adjacent to the building, but it was too much money that they were asking for. So this the this area here, these properties here, um, came available. Uh, our water department utility supervisor went to look at it. Very uh, promising. Uh, price was very, very good. Uh, and it is in the uh, due diligence stage. This begins the process and um, God willing, everything will be great. We'll work out, and we can close on the property in 60 days. Is that not right? Yes. So that that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Councilman Box? Uh, thank you for that explanation, Councilman Quaylor and Mayor uh, earlier about it. No, no questions at all. Okay. Um, Councilman Sims? None. Okay. And myself, none. Do we agree to keep this on consent? Yes. Okay. Number six, resolve that resolution 2022-R236 approves the provision of in-kind services by the city for Marty's GM St. Patrick's Day party and declaration of public purpose. Um, as far as the housekeeping piece of this, uh, last year was the first year we did it. It seemed to go over very well. There was a ton of positive feedback on this. So this would be for a St. Patrick's Day festival up at Marty's GM. Uh, Councilman London, any questions? District 1, no questions. Fair enough. Councilwoman Cuellar? No questions. Councilman Box? No questions. Councilman Sims? No questions. And myself, no questions. There, we agreed to keep it on consent? Yes. yes. Okay, fair enough. We move into our last item, our one and only item on the regular agenda under new business. Ordain that Ordinance 2022-32 authorizes the operation of medical cannabis dispensing sites in the city of Irondale, Alabama. Sims, this has got your name by it. Would you care to introduce it? Um... A little over a week ago, I was on got an email with a couple of other counselors. I'm not, I can't, I don't remember who was on it. I'm asking what the city stance on, I guess, medical cannabis and or medical marijuana, and if we had an ordinance on it. Um, and it was something I'd read back in, I think September, and I think I emailed an article on AL.com to everyone, and then just dropped the ball. We didn't talk about it ever. Um, and so uh, I reached out. We talked. I talked to the agent that was representing them and a couple of their partners over the last week, and. We've got an ordinance that would allow it. Um, there's only 37 licenses. Uh, the state's approved it. It's going to be legal. Uh, the deadline for any application is, I think, the end of this year. Um, so there's a time crunch if that's something we want to look into and do. Um, they want to be in Irondale. Um, if they don't, they have a backup site in Birmingham. Uh, I think it's something that's going to grow over the next several years. Uh, and. Um, I think it's something our citizens, some of them will utilize it again. It's, I don't know how it works as far as the medical marijuana, but you know, obviously you've got to have something from a doctor, I'm assuming. Um, so let's see, 37 licenses are going to be issued by the state. Um, people who apply won't even learn until I think it's uh, June or July, if they've been approved. Um, the ordinance reads that it's a permitted use in a commercial zone. So even passing it doesn't allow it. Um, they'd have to still go before the zoning board and then before us for the location, I believe. If, is that correct? Yeah. 
Okay, I I read it the other way. Okay, well, strike that last part. Uh, and um, we've got two people that would answer any questions y'all have, mm -hmm. if uh, y'all would like, that are here from the uh, group that is uh, looking to be here. Y'all can come up and. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Patrick Hogan. This is my colleague, Linda Peacock. Um, a quick note on that final point. The AMCC, the Alabama Medical Cannabis Commission, will not give you a license unless you are approved by the city council. So in order to operate legally within the state, the AMCC has to grant you the license. And the only way they'll grant you that license is if you get the okay from the city council and the local leaders. Now, there's a host of regulations um, I mean, scores of pages of regulations that we've been pouring over for the past two months that everyone has to meet in order to receive a license from um, limits on how close you can be to daycares and schools to having around the clock commercial grade security. Uh, there's a litany of different regulations that you have to have just in order to qualify for a license. And then they decide whether or not you get that license. So there, I, I can talk a little bit more or if you have any questions. Um, have, we're happy to answer any. If you all were to pass this, then there would not need to be any further office. Okay. For I'm going to read that line in there. So this would be that authorization. Just, excuse me, just one point of clarification. The state is telling us there's been a lot of questions and answers back and forth with the commission because some of the rules haven't been all that clear. They are verbally and in writing telling us that even if a municipality passes an ordinance, we still have to get a letter from the city saying, here's our ordinance we passed, and we agree with this particular location because it's not within a thousand feet of a school or a church. So you're right, but they're still making us get a letter from the city. So but that wouldn't actually mean we could get it back. Correct. We could get it from planning and zoning. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Um, Mayor, I know you're not a voting member of the body per se, but um, I think your um, your opinion counts in this, considering your vision. So I would be curious to see what feedback you may have first. Yes, ever since this was adopted by the state of Alabama, and we've been getting calls here to the city of Irondale on a regular basis. And my consistent answer to everyone is Irondale is not in a place at this time that we want to approve an ordinance to allow this to come into the community. First of all, just from hearing the presentation, there still seems to be some things that are very unclear. Uh, the state is saying that you have to do one thing. We're saying one thing here. Councilman Sam said something else. So there is a clarity issue on what you can do and what you can't do. And my position on this, we don't have to be in a hurry to be able to adopt anything just because someone is telling you that they may go to another municipality. And we are trying to develop a brand from the city that is very unique. And we're trying to develop Irondale to be a destination point. And that is built around the recreational use of all of the assets that we have here from the Cahaba River uh, to Ruffner Mountain, to all the biking, hiking, everything that takes place in the middle of our great city. We are trying to change the image and the brand of the city. And that's why I was opposed to anyone wanting to bring that into the city of Irondale because there is still a lot of things that has not been determined. There are things that have not been decided on as we talk here tonight. And I don't see where it would hurt us to be able to wait until some of these things play out so that we will have a much clearer vision about what we want to be able to do here in the city. 
I know people have pitched this as saying this would be great economic development for the city of Irondale. Uh, but the city of Irondale is already doing fine financially. Uh, we are in a position that we can be selective about what we would like to come into our city. We do not have to accept something just because people are pitching that is going to be, bring more money and economic development opportunities to our city. So that is my position on bringing medical, medical cannabis into the city of Irondale. I feel that we need to wait and see how this play out instead of trying to jump into something where the rules are not clear about how the game is going to be played. Copy. Thank you. Um, and then before I, uh, before I continue, we do have a, a representative from Irondale PD. If anybody wants to hear anything from any policing concerns or anything like that. So if y'all would like, uh, officer Kellogg to come up front, he can, he can by all means do so. Um, councilman London, any comments or questions no. for either Irondale PD or the presenters? No, he said, it, but yeah, I would like to hear from uh, police because Okay. Sir, would you mind? I know I've spoken to um, to Chief Wiggins and Officer Kellogg and everything like that, but please, by all means, Councilman London. No, no, I just want to hear his thoughts. Okay, perfect. Thank you. In preparation for this evening, Chief Huey wouldn't be here, so he designated me to do as much research as I could. And Mr. Hogan is correct that the governing body in the state of Alabama, and please don't come here and correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, the Alabama Medical Marijuana Association. And their problem, the legality of medical marijuana would be decided uh, in late 2023, early 2024. Is that right? That's when the license, That's when the license is. Yes. And the licenses that they're talking about for dispensaries, the um, applications went in in September of this year, they're due this year. and they're due at the end of this year. So, and I think they closed the date for applications in October. Is that right? They asked for an application. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, from I did research on states that do have legal medical marijuana, because one of the things that I was concerned about was exactly that storage, and it's got to be state of the art. Now. There is certainly, this is just getting off the ground in the state of Alabama to address the mayor's concerns, and I think they're valid. And even Mr. Hogan would say it too, there's still a lot up in the air. And they really, they're, the state is doing its best to prepare to the eventual legalization of at least medical marijuana. But they're not, they're not they've got about a year at least before they begin to do it well. I would recommend that we, or the council, if you're interested, look into and contact the uh, Alabama Medical Marijuana Association. They have a web and they have information that I was able to come up with. But as far as security concerns, I really, we don't really have a lot to work with. I would have to, I'd like to consult with agencies that do have a dispensary. Now, all those agencies would be out of state, but I'm pretty sure it would be a phone call and see what the protocols there are if the council goes that way. Um, I do have, would like to see what detail would require the security. What would be, is this a cash business? Because I know that a lot of states have had problems with the federal government because if you put it in a bank, because the states can make it legal for medical purposes, but it's still illegal on a federal level. Is that correct? It is still illegal on a federal level. And if you, put, if you put anything in a bank, it becomes taxable, and then the feds can come in and kind of make life hard for you. Is that right? Their threshold is it's a state license, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now on that, it's a federal license. Okay. And there are credit card companies that have established state programs. So it wouldn't necessarily be a cash and carry. Not necessarily, but there's a lot of money in cash. Sure. Do you have any idea what this, when you talk about a security, what did that entail? Storage? On, are you it's to, extensive. That's one of the things that we did see at uh, the bank that we went with was that they have vaults and this is one of the security. Yeah, I would be concerned about the amount of uh, medical marijuana that is stored because 
you know, it's, they rob banks. I don't want to see my son. <laughs> I want to see his picture. You're in my head. Huh? You're in my head. Is it healthy? So it will be edible. You're acting, you're acting to me like a pharmacist. Yeah. My big thing was I was hung up on the difference between CBD and THC, so I had to educate myself on that. Yes, sir. It's definitely not what you would think of as a traditional marijuana. And, you know, um, well, I would be concerned about, <clears throat> and this would probably go to employment, how detailed, and that was probably something the state's working out, is background checks. And, and we, and what would be the age of usage? Now, I know that would probably be up to a doctor because it's a, but and then you got, it's pretty much, and I do have to admit, because it is so new, I haven't, I'm not as up on it as I would like to be, and I'm going to really hit that site, the medical marijuana site that the state's got up, and I'd recommend we do that too, so that then I can, or the chief can report back to you. And if you have any concerns, any questions, please direct them to us. Either email or phone call, we'd be glad to help. Overall, I am I understand the mayor's concerns because they're, they're mine. I just don't know enough about this yet. And it's still, I, I, I'm glad I have time to look into it so that I can allay some fears and allay some of your fears. That kind of is a tap dance around where I'm at. Any questions? I appreciate you. Councilman London, anything? No. Okay. Councilwoman Cuellar? Um For either the host or, or? No, I don't have any for Officer Kellogg or the uh, two presenters. Thank you. But I do have some concerns, um, which we can discuss. Can we discuss those now, or do we want to wait until everyone has a chance to ask them questions? Um, I would say, I mean, we have to be precise with our language yeah um but as as long as legal mm -hmm. is accepting of the questions mm -hmm. we're asking yes. then i would i would okay. allow it well first it's important i want to thank councilman sims for the work he did the research he did uh, very very helpful the uh question that came to mind um and this was mentioned uh uh at the CDA board meeting, as well as others that have expressed it, and that is that there currently is um, a, a some various groups that are trying to get marijuana legalized at the federal level. And if we were to go on and approve this ordinance, then that would open the door. Am I correct in that understanding? Because we've approved this and it's now legalized at the federal level, for others to come into Irondale and uh, begin to uh, sell marijuana. Is that is that a correct understanding of it? Okay. This this you know what what y'all are considering at this point is you know input of the Alabama state, you know, what they have actually Any company who wants to dispense in a state has to, to go through, this is what they're doing, is okay. put that application in the process that we talked about earlier. It's actually opened, and then there was a time frame in October for them to do that. They want to do that with marijuana. Mm -hmm. They had to mm -hmm. have been granted. Then at, at that point, they were given an application. Part of that is that they need to identify a site, which okay. is you know what they have already already done. But they also need to show as part of the application in the you know process that the site is going to be ac accepting it, which is what you all will be considering whenever you do those things. Thank you. No okay. other questions. Thank you. 
Uh, Councilman Box. Uh, uh, once again, uh, echoing Councilman Quayler's uh, sentiments, uh, thank you for putting in the work on this area. And um, I have had family members that uh, have had some uh, relief and good experience with medical with medical cannabis, medical marijuana. So I definitely see the benefits to it in there. Um, I guess I would have a question for the presenters of, um, should the state not approve you, what, what is your plan B on this location? Well, yes, sir. Our principal for real estate agency is Dr. Chandler. And he talked about this with Dr. Chandler. And it's all from Dr. Chandler. So if we can get the principal to approve that, then the people from Dr. Chandler can walk off with their money and they can walk with that plan if we are allowed to do that or to have those options. Okay, very good. We inventory properly. Um, with that said, though, and in, in hearing the mayor's comments on uh, timing, that, that has to weigh pretty heavily in my decision, too, because initially I, I was uh, uh, very much on board uh, because of the good experiences that uh, I know family members have had in, in relief uh, for pain and from cancer treatments, things like that. So, anyway, that, that's pretty much all my comments on it. Copy. Um, Councilman Sims? I know you've introduced this. Do you have anything else to add? Um, well, I, I, I wish we didn't have a shortened time period. Um, I mean, I did do a lot of research last week before I even reached out, I think, to uh, the city attorney to ask, is it even possible to try and even create something to put on our agenda? Um, I did find a study that actually said that um, medical marijuana facilities had less crime than liquor stores and tobacco stores, which I think from Oregon and Colorado um, was on the first page of Google, so y'all can find that, which was something I didn't intend to, you would have thought different, but um, so apparently they do pretty good. Um, I definitely understand the mayor's concern on, um, you know, today's branding and stuff like that. I also feel that this is something that in five years, is going to be like a liquor store or a tobacco store, which we have two liquor stores and a tobacco store currently. Um, the state also is only granting 37 licenses this first year. It's not going to be like when you land in Colorado and apparently there's some sort of to, um, marijuana place on every corner. Um, it's going to be, they are very highly restricted. Even if it passes on a federal level, the state is going to have their say. I'm pretty sure there's going to be severe hoops to jump through and recreation is totally different than medical and so i don't think this ordinance is going to open it up to again someone just being able to come in and open up a shop no matter what the federal government decides to do in the future but again um i just one vote uh thank you for uh listening and uh i just wish again the time crunch it'd be nice to have had some more time but that's where we're at fair enough thank you sir um, and as far as my comments go, uh, I know we've acknowledged your work on this for bringing this to us. I, I've seen your emails and everything read through all of it. You've done a, a significant amount of research on this. So I just, I appreciate the time that you put into, into this ordinance. Uh, my question to our presenters tonight would be, um, is basically the con and I know you mentioned about inventory and property and possibly coming back if this doesn't go through. So I guess my question would be, is the, is the contract you have contingent upon, um, our decision this evening? No. Copy. Thank you. And the, and the, the property that you're looking at is which property, if you could just state it for the good of the group. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Yeah. Gotcha. Fair enough. Thank you very much. And I'm good. Officer, thank you for that. Presenters, thank you for your time this evening. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we've, um, is there, um, I think we've deliberated as much as we need to on this new business and we have our consent agenda in place. So that being said, I would ask for approval of the form of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the form of the agenda. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right.
At this time, we would hear from any public comments on agenda items only. Paul Saucier, 1113 Cloudcrest Drive. Um, to start with, I'm not for the medical cannabis yet. I mean, let's wait till it's legalized federally and then let's make our mind up after that. But you compared it to a liquor store and a tobacco store and nobody compared it to a doctor's office. Nobody compared it to a restaurant that we're trying to bring in. Nobody's compared it to a grocery store. Nobody's compared it to a, a park we wanna take our, our babies walking in. Let's not put it right in the middle of our downtown. I mean, we want to bring people into our city to establish a family atmosphere. We wanna see sidewalks, we wanna see trees. We're not looking for a neon medical cannabis sign. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments on agenda items only? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want, I had the opportunity, I ran across somebody recently that is really involved with the metal, medical cannabis and has been in other states. And we had a long conversation and he had a lot of concerns about the way this was being implemented in Alabama. And he was very knowledgeable. I mean, it, you know, it, it's his business, I guess you could say. So I agree with the mayor and the others have spoken and said, this is not really something for us to be the first on. Uh, right now, there are no dispensaries. You know, we're, they're going through the process. This commission, you can tell, is really trying to figure out the process. Um, and another great point is that we're trying to build up Highway 78. We're going to make some changes to make it much more um, positive and a more welcoming place for our visitors. And that's just not the right place. As he mentioned, it should probably be located mm -hmm. in with a medical facility or where medical things are because that's what this is. So, again, I'm not against the cannabis. I'm not against this new law, but I'm very much against us going ahead and approving this to come into Irondale until we really know um, how it's going to operate. And, and I don't think we should be the first on that. Copy. Thank you. Any other comments on agenda items only? All right. Fair enough. With all comments on agenda items only, we'll move forward to, if I can get a vote to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. No abstentions on the consent agenda. All right, so that moves us through item one through six. We'll go straight to the new business item number one. If someone could go ahead and begin to take us through the process of ordinance 2022-32. Make a motion that ordinance 2022-32 be considered read. Second. Motion and a second for being read. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's, any abstentions? Okay. Make a motion that we suspend all rules that would prevent the immediate consideration of ordinance 2022-32. All right. Um, Councilman Sims has put on the second portion. Councilman London, roll call? No. Councilwoman Cuellar? No, not at this time. Councilman Box? No. Councilman Sims? Yes. And myself, no. Okay, thank you. At this time, we've finished our deliberation on this item and our consent agenda. Um, I would ask for any public comments to the council on non-agenda items. Any comments to the council on non-agenda items? All right. With no comments on non-agenda items, I ask for a motion. Motion, motion to adjourn Sorry. and second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah.